Hello, my name is Peter and I'm a graduate design engineer here at Redosip. In this video, I would like to talk to you about interrupts and interrupt preemption. First of all, what even are interrupts? Basically, interrupts are a way to signal to the core that needs to stop executing the code inside the main and start executing the code inside something called a trap handler, which is a piece of code dedicated to interrupts. You can view them as an emergency phone call which needs to be answered as soon as possible. For example, when you press a button on an elevator, it triggers an interrupt which sends it to your floor. Why are these useful, you may ask? Well, thanks to this interrupt, the core can let the interrupt controller notify it about an event, instead of constantly checking if it has happened. This means that the core can wait for an interrupt while sleeping, or it can focus on other tasks. Also, these interrupts usually have fast response times, since polling is done at a certain frequency while interrupts are immediate. Well, they aren't actually immediate, because there are several steps that need to happen before an interrupt is serviced. First of all, there is some delay inside the interrupt controller, which needs to evaluate its input pins. Afterwards, the core can finally jump to the trap handler's address, where the first thing that happens is something called context saving. This is where the contents of general purpose registers and control and status registers are saved onto the stack. Afterwards, we can finally start executing the actual function code inside the trap handler. After we're done, we need to do the same thing that happened in the beginning in reverse, which is called context restore, where we load data from the stack into the general purpose and control and status registers. Interrupts can have certain attributes which define their function. Firstly, we differentiate between edge-sensitive and level-sensitive interrupts. Edge-sensitive interrupts react to the change in the input port, which can be either rising or falling. Level-sensitive interrupts react to a high or low level on the input pin. Other very important attribute of interrupts is their priority. This defines which interrupt is taken in case two happen at the same time. This priority also enables us something called interrupt preemption. Now that we know the basics of interrupts, we can dive into the act of preemption. In computer world, preempting means temporarily disabling a task with the intent of resuming it later. This is exactly what's happening uh, when we're talking about interrupt preemption, where we pause the first interrupt trap handler to execute the second one with higher priority. You can view it on the diagram that I, that I made. As you can see, firstly, we are executing the code inside the main loop when we get the first interrupt. We enter the trap handler when we first save the context. And while we are executing the functional code, we get another higher priority interrupt, which means we need to take it. The, uh, while entering the second trap handler, we save the context from the first one, execute the functional code, restore back the context, and then we can finally go back into the first trap handler and finish it. When we finish it, we restore the context which we had in the main code. You can also view it in the, in the diagram when it comes to, uh, which is dependent on time. This is where we execute in the main. We go into the first trap handler, second one, and this is where something called nested interrupts happen, where you have one interrupt going inside the other. Now the question is, why can't we just wait for the first trap handler, handler to finish before executing the second one? In most systems, this is probably fine, but there are some systems which require very, very fast response time to certain events, which need to be prioritized even over low priority interrupts. Going back to our elevator example, it is probably more important to react to a malfunction than your button press. Now, interrupt preemption may seem useful, but you need to be careful not to let it happen often. This is because context saving inside a trap uh, takes longer time than regular context saving due to some hardware limitations. Also, with multiple nesting interrupts, it is easier to introduce saturated vulnerabilities by multiple accesses to the same to the global variables, which is less likely to happen in non-preemptive execution. Well, these are all the information is needed to understand interrupts and interrupt preemptions. Thank you for watching and make sure to check out other videos on our YouTube and stay tuned, stay tuned for future videos in this series.